Welcome to Sports Beat KC, the Kansas City Stars Daily Sports Podcast. It is Friday, April 2nd, and I'm Blair Kirkhoff. On today's show, beat writer Gary Bedore and I reminisce a bit about Roy Williams and his days at Kansas. Williams announced his retirement on Thursday, closing the curtain on a 33 year career. The first 15 were spent at Kansas. At the time, Williams was a relatively unknown assistant at North Carolina, his alma mater, but athletic director Bob Frederick took a chance and made one of the greatest hires in college sports history. Williams went on to four Final Fours at Kansas and five more along with three NCAA titles at North Carolina. He's in the Naismith Memorial Hall of Fame and leaves the game with 903 career victories. Gary's covered Kansas basketball since Roy's arrival, and I was the Kansas beat writer for seven years, starting with Williams second. I hope you enjoy our conversation. Hey, Gary, how you doing today? Good, Blair. Uh, I hope you're well. Yeah, yeah, busy morning. The best laid plans. We scheduled the podcast for a certain time on, on, on Friday morning, and then news breaks, because that's what news does, right? It yeah. comes at you unexpectedly, and there was news this morning on the Kansas basketball front that Bill Self had signed a, uh, an extension. He's now, uh, I guess they're calling it a lifetime contract. Um, what do we know about the deal? Uh, it's a five-year rollover, so uh, that extends every year. So he'll be on a perpetual five-year deal, which uh, Roy Williams used to have that and probably still did at Carolina. He always wanted the the five-year rollover deal yeah. because uh, you can tell recruits, <laughs> you know, I'm here and I'm not going anywhere. My contract is, you know – infinity so (laughs) now it probably locks him into uh the same amount of money you know he he probably can't get a big raise or something but the security think about it if you're 58 years old like bill uh it's probably a day to rejoice because you've got you know you're set through the end of your working career absolutely and of course this is a quite a vote of confidence in kansas with the school dealing with the NCAA investigation. So, yeah. you know, we'll, we'll, we'll talk more about this on, uh, on, on Monday's podcast, I believe. Maybe uh, we'll, we'll talk about this and set up the national championship game that will be played that night. But the reason you and I are talking today is because of the news that broke on Thursday, and that was Roy Williams announcing his retirement I don't know if if I was shocked by the news. There seemed to have been some hints in in uh, you know over the last year or two that he was nearing the end of his career, and he's seventy years old. But um, did did you were you surprised by by the news? I think I'm like you. I wasn't really shocked um, when you think about his age and and he's seventy. I didn't know. I watched the press conference where he expressed that he felt he was not doing a good job anymore. He wasn't the right man for the job. He cited uh, the incident last year in a game where he did not tell his players that they were out of timeouts or something, or they had, or they were to foul. He was kind of harsh on himself, I thought. But in his mind, he he kept saying he didn't think he was the right man for the job anymore. And, uh, you know, I don't think one mistake in a game is that big a deal or he didn't cite completely the changing landscape of basketball transfer rules where kids can leave. But he did say that, that, you know, he didn't like all the stuff that was going on, but uh, I was not shocked because quite frankly, he should retire unless he wants to, to go to his 80. Why not enjoy life? I mean, the working world takes you through 65 or 70, allegedly. And even though it's fun, it is work. And now Roy Williams can, can go to basketball games. He can do ESPN if he wants. He can hang out with the grandkids and he's got, you know, more than one, I believe, hang out with his kids. He said he wanted to give back to Wanda, his wife. So I wasn't shocked just because I think, Coaches should be like normal people and retire at some point and play some golf. So uh, I'm happy for him. Like you, you got to just like the guy, love the guy, whatever we want to call it. 
because he's an upstanding guy in a business that can be cruel and I don't want to say corrupt necessarily, but Roy Williams, say what you want about him, corny, <laughs> whatever. Uh, if I had to give a character recommendation, I would give one of the highest quality to Roy. Not that I know him that well, but like you, I do know him. Well, that's well said, Gary. Um, and I will emphasize the golf part too. I think <laughs> I think we're going to see Roy Williams on the golf course quite a lot here in in his retirement years. I want to go back to the uh, beginning of, of his Kansas career with you because you you were there. I missed it by a year. In, in the 1988-89 season, I was covering Virginia Tech in for a newspaper in, in Roanoke, Virginia. And uh, and so that was Roy's first year in Lawrence. Now, having grown up in North Carolina and lived in North Carolina and Virginia, I, I knew who Roy Williams was, and, uh, and I followed North Carolina basketball. I never thought of him as a head coaching candidate, but gosh, he, he landed a, a big one with the help of, of Dean Smith and, and Bob Frederick. And I, I want to say this, when I was covering Virginia Tech, I'll never forget being on the road. It must have been the night before a game I was covering. I was in the hotel bar watching Kansas play Oklahoma at Allen Fieldhouse. KU was going through a really bad stretch at the time. They, they started out really hot in Roy's first year. But they'd hit a, you know, they'd gotten tired and they were shorthanded, but they were given Oklahoma, which I think may have been the top ranked team at the time, all they could handle and ended up losing in overtime. And I just remember being so impressed with the way Kansas was playing against this, you know, this juggernaut Oklahoma team. And that was Roy's first team. And I mean, I, I didn't know what to expect after that. And I would soon, soon learn because I, I came to Kansas City right after the season. But I'm wondering what you remember about, first of all, the search and then the press conference and, and your first impressions of Roy. Well, uh, it's interesting that game you pointed out, 94 to 89 overtime lost Oklahoma because the next game against Duke in Durham, Crush. he lost 102 to 77. <laughs> so poor Roy trying to coach that first team, you know, that could not go to the tournament because of probation. Right. Caused by the, the Larry Brown era. But when uh, Roy was named coach, as you know, and we all know, uh, there was no internet. So you really, you know, you couldn't just pop up the name Roy Williams and find out who this guy was. We were at the Journal World, a PM paper, and Bob Frederick, back in those days, you know, uh, I don't know what the wording is. They took care of the local paper, whatever you want to call it. And they tipped us off to go to the Holodome at 10 a.m. and you'll meet the new basketball coach. So uh, in a small paper, you know, Chuck Woodling was doing the desk layout and I covered basketball too, but not full time. So he told me to go over to the Holodome <laughs> and uh, interview the new coach and we get it in before the press conference at KU at 11 or something. So I go over to the Holodome and I asked Bob Frederick, who's a friend, I covered him when he was a high school coach I said, who's the, who, who am I about to interview? Who's the coach? And then I saw Roy walking up and uh, he said, he's Roy Williams, uh, third assistant on Dean Smith's staff, whatever. So uh, Roy was ill. He had the flu and uh, you know, he gave me all the basics and I ran back and wrote it and uh, just thought, wow, Kansas has gone from Larry Brown to somebody I wouldn't know from Adam, you know? But uh, at the real press conference a few hours later, he was great. And I watched it recently again. And it's funny how some people are, but Roy called himself Roy Williams, even in his first press conference. <laughs> he said, when Roy Williams gets a place he likes, he tends to stay. I've got the same golf clubs, et cetera. So I will say this. Not just at that presser, but Roy hit the ground running. And to succeed at Kansas, he knew he had a system. He knew he was going to copy Dean Smith's system. And he was not shy, like, I better not ruffle feathers. I better be timid for a while. He implemented his stuff right away. And it didn't take long for KU to start winning. That first year was wild. But, um, in the third year, they went to the Final Four, and he was off and running. Yeah, yeah. Well, a couple things of when he when he first got there, he had to salvage a recruiting class, right? And yeah, 
they had, um, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, or and I'm sure I am, but Harold Miner, Thomas Hill, and Adonis Jordan were signed play or committed to play at Kansas, but only one did. Yeah, and he always uh, he always thanked Adonis publicly uh, for sticking with KU because everybody needs a great point guard, and Adonis, who's kind of been forgotten, was really good. Yeah. So uh, Harold Miner did not show, but uh, Roy got that recruit in. I can't remember, you know, his first real full class who was in it, but uh, he was a good recruiter, obviously. Yep, yeah, for sure. We talked about the first year they were on probation. They would have been an NCAA tournament team had they not been on probation, but, the, you know, the Jayhawks didn't go to the NCAA tournament in 1989. They haven't missed one since, and that streak has started – you know, started yeah. the next year with with Roy Williams teams, and I'll, I'll never. That was my first year covering Kansas, and I just will never forget just how good this team was. And and early on, I mean, to go beat uh, to go to Baton Rouge and beat uh, Shaquille O'Neal and LSU, and then win the preseason NIT, beating Vegas along the way that would go on to win the national championship, and just having a, a a whale of a season, going to number one and and battling Missouri and Oklahoma all year. That was just a exciting, exciting college basketball season in the, in the old big eight. Kansas ran out of gas at the end, lost yeah. to UCLA in the second round. But as you said, in his third year, he goes to the final four, uh, wins his first uh, big eight championship. They, I think they tied, I want to say they tied Oklahoma. I, I can't remember exactly, but they did win the first big eight championship in 91 and yeah. they get to the final four, beat Dean Smith and North Carolina in the semifinal and then lose yeah. to Duke in the championship game. What a, what a meteoric rise for Roy Williams in his early on, just first three years at KU. Yeah, it's amazing how, how time flies because I can vividly remember in 1991, the year that they beat um, Indiana and Arkansas in the NCAA tournament to get to the final four. He beat Bob Knight and Nolan Richardson. In the Arkansas game in the Elite Eight, everybody thought the season was over because KU was down by 12 in the second half. They still won. But I remember being at the hotel, and I went into the bar in 91, and Dick Vitale was in there. I don't know how old he would have been if we do the math, but he was holding court in the bar. Dick had said some really nice things about Roy, who was a new young coach. So Roy had said something to me about that, and – I told Vitale that uh, that was nice of him to help out a young coach because, again, Roy Williams was not really well known. And Dick Vitale came out, you know, glowing about him and everything. And uh, it shows you how time flies because yesterday Dick Vitale was sending out a tweet, you know, putting the finishing touches on Roy's career, congratulating him. But Roy's Jayhawks were kind of the talk of basketball uh, until, like you said, they ran out of gas and UCLA got them in Atlanta by a point. And I'd love to go back in time and watch the postseason presser because, boy, Roy had to be crushed there, you know, the ups and downs. And then the following year to win the Big Eight and uh, to go to the Final Four where I believe that was Mike Krzyzewski's first national title. Everybody... Yeah, well, Remember in the days where uh, coaches, the best coach to never win a title. Well, uh, this was Shashevsky's turn almost, and everybody knew that Duke was going to win. But KU actually gave him a pretty decent game in the title game. It was not a blowout, but Duke won by seven. So a lot of my Roy highlights are from very early in his career and looking at his biggest games – You know, you point out a lot of tournament games and a lot of non-conference games like the UCLA game where they were down 15 at half and won. But, shoot, there had to be a million Big 8 games and and conference games that were huge in his career. So many big wins that uh, on my list I didn't even include any Big 8 games. (laughs) And there were were a ton of Big 8 games and Big 12 games or whatever that, that were classics under Roy. Oh, for sure, for sure. I, you know, going back to that that regional in uh, when they beat Indiana and Arkansas, that was in Charlotte, and I remember that was a big thing uh, for Roy to to win it in Charlotte because he had family members there. Going back to North Carolina, and, yeah, 
and they destroyed Indiana. Remember that they they got up twenty four to five or something like that, and yes. Bobby Knight Bobby Knight comes over and says, "Can we start the game over again?" <laughs> <laughs> It was yeah, hilarious. that was ama- That was an amazing game. The beginning onslaught. Yep, yep. Yeah, look, you, you did. I believe you did a list of. Uh, of I haven't I haven't seen it yet, but a list of Roy's greatest victories. I'll I'll point out just a couple because yeah. I stopped covering him as a as a beat um, after the uh, the loss to Arizona in '97. Of course, you continued on and continue to this day covering the Jayhawks on a regular basis. But a few that stand out to me are the the victory over uh, Indiana in the regular season when Jacques Vaughn hit the the jumper to to win it. Um, Another one was when they beat UCLA at Allen Fieldhouse. They came back from a big deficit, and again, Jacques Vaughn had the the spin move to the basket. But if there was a big eight game that I'll I'll never forget involving Roy, a couple of them really, the Oklahoma State game in um, you know where it was Bryant Reeves against uh, Greg Ostertag, and uh, and Randy Rutherford scored forty five, but Brian Reeves didn't score at all. And then of course the famous uh, Texas game where Nick Collison was phenomenal and Dick Vitale gave him a standing ovation on the air. Gosh, I remember the Missouri game when Anthony Peeler scored what forty two and and uh, yeah. and Kansas won that one as well, but. Yeah, there's there's so many so many you know memorable moments in Allen Fieldhouse authored by the Roy Williams teams. Yeah, and the Kentucky game where it wasn't a good game, but they scored 150 points. Oh gosh! And yeah. uh, <laughs> that was Leo. they had 80 at halftime, and you were wondering where it would end. How many are they going to get today? So right. uh, that game wasn't I, I counted. The, <laughs> I counted two games as one, the Arkansas and Indiana in the NCAA tournament because they were right after each other. But uh, uh, I remember the Collison game where Vital did that, and and that was huge. The guys that Roy had uh, throughout his career, Paul Pierce, Collison, Heinrich, Drew Gooden, some, you know, he brought some guys to town, Jacques Vaughn brought guys to town that really added to KU lore and made so many memories and and Bill Self took took over for him and also has brought in stars so Roy certainly coached a batch of uh, great great players great oh, yeah. friends boy Gary let's take a quick break and then we'll come back and, and pick up the conversation Hey it's Blair we have a special subscription offer for Sports Beat KC listeners unlimited digital access to the Kansas City Star's award-winning sports coverage. Sign up now for one year of Sports Pass for access to all the sports news, features, and columns presented on the KansasCity.com site, and it's only $30. That's a 40% savings off our regular rate. Your subscription will automatically renew after the initial term at $50 unless you tell us to cancel. Your subscription helps support the sports coverage of KansasCity.com and the Kansas City Star, and that support has never been more important. Please visit KansasCity.com slash SportsBeatKC offer to get this special offer. And as always, thanks for listening. Okay, back with Gary Bedore. We're talking and remembering the Roy Williams tenure at Kansas. Roy Williams, of course, uh, announced his resignation as a head coach on Thursday at um, at North Carolina. You were starting to name some of the some of the players, Gary. I wanted to get into that a little bit with you because um, when you when you look at the Roy Williams fifteen years at Kansas, it's bookended by Final Four appearances, right? Ninety one and ninety three yeah. with with Adonis Jordan and Mark Randall and Rex Walters. A Jordan was the only one on both of those, but you get the idea. And then at the end... Alonzo Jamison was a great player. Yes, yes. MVP of that regional that you and I were talking about in, yeah. in Charlotte. And then at the end, in 02 and 03, with, uh, with you know, Nick Collison, Kirk Heinrich, and, and Drew Gooden in 02, uh, fantastic teams. But... <laughs> and Boshi. And, and Jeff Boshi, correct. But I've always maintained that the best Kansas teams Roy coach were the ones in the middle of those two that didn't get to a Final Four. You agree? Yeah. Um, are we talking the Arizona loss? The, yes, that team. Jared Hass, great player. Um, yeah, they uh, they went to the Sweet 16. Where was that game? That game was in, Me- I want to say, Mem- was it Memphis? Oh, Birmingham is when they, they yes. won 
They won two games in Memphis and then went to Birmingham and lost to the Arizona Wildcats, which hadn't looked good in their first two NCAA wins. But, you know, that was the Bibby team, Miles Simon. It was a terrific – they went on to win the national championship. And, yeah. and I remember Kansas was a little banged up in that game. Uh, Scott Pollard was hurt. Hass was hurt. But Kansas never told anybody about that, and they played. But what a, what a crushing, crushing loss that was. Yeah, that's the one team that arguably is one of the best in school history that didn't get out of the Sweet 16. And, and yeah, you mentioned Pollard. What a player. But the Mike Bibby team, and again, Lou Olson, his only title, uh, his first and only was that year. So Kansas had been victimized <clears throat> by some great coaches winning their only titles because didn't Gary Williams' Maryland team go on to win after beating KU? Yes, sir, in 2002. And, of course, the next his year. His only won. title, I believe. Uh, and Jim Beheim the next year. Yeah. Wasn't that Beheim's fir- only? Only. Yeah. Yep. So uh, a lot of, uh, re- not regret, but Roy should have should have had a title here. Um they should have won it probably the year where Bibby beat them because KU was so good and uh, it would have been fitting for him to get a title. And I'm sure uh, sure Roy Roy feels bad that he never got one, but what are you going to do? <laughs> what are you going to do? I mean, right. uh, I well, think about- had he stayed, they probably would have signed Tyler Hensborough and maybe Tyler would have got one. But I'm not going to downgrade – one of my faves, Nick Collison, he was every bit as good as Tyler. And uh, Nick made it to the title game, but they didn't quite get it done. And, of course, you spoke to Nick Collison. I thought he yeah. had very nice things to say, as as you'd expect. Um, that, uh, that Yeah, he's good. such a good guy. On another note, as you know, it's a shame we can't go in the locker room anymore. We can't talk to guys one-on-one anymore because that's part of the fun of this business. I mean – we got to know some of these guys and quite frankly, a lot of these guys are great guys, you know, and now it's just whatever (laughs) you can't, even without, even without the pandemic, we can't talk to them. It's pretty, pretty regimented. Yeah. I mean, you know, if we, if we weren't allowed in the locker rooms back in the day, we would never have known what, uh, what nail polish Scott Pollard had on his toenails. (laughs) (laughs) He would show us the, the stuff those guys <laughs> they gained from it too they like they're bored they like messing with the media and getting to know them and how yeah. many times did they attack chuck woodling <laughs> <laughs> and just joke around with him but anyway that's people don't lo- care about our problems but uh, okay so it gets to the end right it's 2003 and uh matt doherty's not getting it done at chapel hill so roy said he was staying once but he didn't say it a second time. And look, I certainly did not blame Roy Williams for for answering the call uh, for uh, in 2003 to go to go go back to his alma mater. I thought the fan reaction was a little over the top and had um, you know and, and wasn't appreciative of n- enough of what Roy Williams had accomplished at, at Lawrence. And, and, and I I thought he was hurt by it. I know we talked a couple of times yeah. afterwards when I went to Chapel Hill for games and we, we talked about it, but um, he was always wondering, you know, how people were back in, in Lawrence and Kansas city. Uh, but eventually I, I think those feelings went away, especially when Bill Self started to have all the success that he did, especially winning the 2008 NCAA title. But what do you remember about, um, uh, about the last, uh, the, that last week of, of Roy Williams and Lawrence, they lose the title game to Syracuse. And then there's that crazy week of yeah. uh, he, well, what's, what's going to happen. It's strange because you were in Chapel Hill. Yeah. Because I was out there with our photographer, Earl Richardson, and I heard you were there, <laughs> and I never have asked you, when did you come back to Lawrence? Now, is this, for the, is this in 2000 or 2000? Yeah, in 2000 when Roy said, I'm staying, yes. I believe you, you headed out there. As soon as we got the word that Guthridge was leaving, we all knew there was trouble. And I think you must have got on a plane immediately for I did. Chapel. I did. And of course I had I had an advantage in that my parents live in Raleigh. So <laughs> you know, I had a place to stay and I could hang out for a long time. But yeah, I can remember going into the, you know, going into the bars on Franklin Street and the restaurants and talking to students 
um, about it. And, you, you know, and, and everybody said what they, they, you know, you thought they would say that, you know, we, we'd love for Roy to be here. We think he's going to come. And I know that the Durham paper actually had a headline that Roy agrees to terms with the, the Tar Heels. What a, what a bad source that reporter had. Oh. But to be honest with you, Gary, I just, the, the longer I stayed in Chapel Hill, the more I'm thinking, well, why hasn't it happened yet? Oh, you know, you know, why, you know, day, day two, three, four, and it still hasn't happened. And I'm thinking, why, why hasn't this, and this was in July. It wasn't like it was right after, unlike 2003, when it happened right after the season in 2000, it happened in, in the middle of summer. You, you could have made the announcement any day and it wasn't happening. And I just thought he is really having second thoughts about this. Cause I think at the beginning of the week or the beginning of that period that Roy probably thought he should go. And then the more he thought about it, um, the more he considered it and thought about his freshman class, right, of yeah. you know, Collison and Heinrich, that it was a better move to stay and the, the promise he made to those kids. And yeah. and then the famous scene at Memorial Stadium. Um, I, I'll never forget that, you know, being in that the old football press room in the bowels of Memorial Stadium while the Kansas had what, what passed for a big screen then. Roy was on it and said he was staying and the 15,000 or so, whatever it was, just erupted in cheers. Yeah, we did not make it back in time for that. Uh, we, we were at the press conference in Chapel Hill after Roy said he was staying, and it was a funeral-like atmosphere <laughs> where uh, their AD who – oh, Dick Bedour. Yeah, Dick Bedour. Uh, yep. Boy, the poor guy had to had to face the media because their coaching search was, was in deep trouble. You know, Roy took a whole week to decide and uh, – now they're really at square one, and uh, and we uh, we missed the the great thing in Lawrence, which they had a ceremony at the football stadium, like you said, and it was probably like winning a huge game for the fans because sure. they thought they had Roy forever, and uh, again, it probably would be a matter of time before they they finally win a title. But that week was just uh, insane, and then. Of course, when he finally did leave, he did it again. He took a whole week to <laughs> – it was almost like he wanted to show the same respect to uh, Kansas, you know, showing that he really did did sweat over this, and, uh, and he finally left. Now, this time, there were so much drama, Al Bowl, and the Kansas people fired the AD – uh, and it still didn't didn't let Roy stay because of all the reasons, you know, not wanting to turn down Dean Smith again. And going back home, uh, somebody was sick in his family, maybe his sister or his mother. Something was going on, and and uh, it was time for Roy to go home, I guess. But he would have been he would have been just as happy doing his whole career here. But again, there was too many reasons to go back to his alma mater and his home state. No, you're right. Exactly. And look, if if Matt Doherty had worked out as head coach at North Carolina, yeah, maybe Roy finishes his career at Kansas. Who knows? But he goes to Chapel Hill, and I'll, I, I covered their first NCAA appearance there. It was the next year. They went to Denver and lost to Texas. And Rick Barnes in the in the first or second round, uh, but they didn't get they didn't get out of that first weekend. And of course, the next weekend they win the national championship, or the next year they win the national championship in St. Louis. They beat Bruce Weber's Illinois team for the national title. And I'll, I'll, I'll remember after after cutting down the nets and the and doing the locker room thing and doing all the post game obligations, I was still in the building in the old it was the old dome over in St. Louis and. Roy was in there for quite a long time and I just wanted to go over to him and congratulate him. And, mm. uh, and it was really, it was really a nice moment just to say, you know, everybody feels good about this. And uh, so we were, so we at least able to do that. And again, I do think the, the, the ill feelings that some Kansas fans had changed when, you know, at the 2008 final four where when Kansas beats them, right. Beats them badly. Yeah. And then he comes to the national championship game with the Jayhawk stickers on his, uh, you know, on his shirt. Yeah, pulling for KU, and um, and and I think once Kansas won the title, people who had any negative feelings about Roy leaving Lawrence, they had to just say, "Well, for, that's wasted energy. Forget about it." Yeah, the only people that stayed upset, it's like, come on, <laughs> right. if, 
But uh, as you you recall, they <clears throat> they had the four head coaches come back. It's, I believe it's the only time Roy's been back in Allen. Larry Brown, Ted Owens, Roy Williams, Bill Self did an hour and a half long uh, 100-year anniversary thing in the field house. And only at Kansas, they, they drew like 12,000 for a, a set of speeches, uh, which was a neat night. But uh, Roy, Roy got good, uh, good ovation there. I do remember when uh, Roy came back for the banquet uh, for Nick Collison and Kirk Heinrich and those guys, and it was at the lead Center – and some guy was booing Roy, <laughs> and uh, Nick's dad got up and said, "You should be ashamed of yourself, sir." It was not a good moment, you know, to try to spoil the banquet by yelling at Roy. Right. But people took it personally, and we've all compared it. They compared it to a divorce, and uh, people tried to tell Roy, "Coach, you know, this is a compliment." They miss you, you know, but naturally Roy's thinking, shoot, I gave my sweat and blood and, and tried, you know, to win them a title. And, and we had a lot of great moments along the way. And here here I'm getting some guy in downtown Lawrence putting my picture over a, uh, a urinal or something, you know. Right. It, it was kind of a classless move there. But uh, I think if they bring him back for uh, maybe the Missouri game next year or something, and honor him or or figure a proper time to do it. I don't know what that would be. I think he would be uh, warmly received. Oh, for because sure. he's a class act. Absolutely. Maybe maybe on the the level that Will Chamberlain was back in the the, the late Yeah. 90s. Yeah, maybe something like that. Well, Gary, it's been fun uh, reminiscing uh with you about about the Roy Williams era. 15 years at Kansas. Was it four eighteen victories at, at KU? I can't remember the. Um, yeah, I think it, I think it was like four between four twenty around that area. Okay, and then of course I was thinking the other day that you and myself are probably one of the few writers that actually know fairly well all four KU coaches: Bill Self, Larry Brown, Roy Williams, and Ted Owens. Yeah, good guys all, you know. But you know Larry from back in the day, right? Yeah, I do. I, I, I'll, boy, I've, we've talked to Larry a few times, and I'll, I'll never forget. Uh, we can go down another rabbit hole here. I yeah. <laughs> um, that, that 2008 Final Four when Larry's, you know, the, the Larry Brown Final Four, he had Calipari at Memphis and, you know, and, and uh, you know, the three co- three schools yeah. he coached, right, UCLA and Kansas and North Carolina were attended. And then um, uh, in 2012, he followed KU throughout the, um, you know, their run to the national championship game there, too. He was at all, every step of the way. And so it was kind of just fun to always talk Kansas basketball. And one of the more interesting figures, sports figures of all time, Larry Brown, for sure. And, of course, Bill, uh, Ted Owens, one of the finest men you'll ever meet. No doubt Bill, about it. Uh, we all love, we all love dealing with Bill. He's so friendly. So, and of course, Roy Williams, who I will never, uh, I would give him the highest character evaluation as you would too. Just a good, good guy. Absolutely. Hall of Famer, 903 career wins. One of the greatest coaches of all time. All right, Gary, had a good time doing this. Uh, let's talk again soon. All right. Thank you. That'll do it for today and this week on Sports Beat KC. Thanks to our production staff of Derek Donovan, Beth Welsh, Monty Davis, Jeff Rosen, Chris Fickett, and Savannah Smith. Big thanks to Gary Bedore for stopping by and reminiscing about Roy Williams and his years at Kansas. Links to stories about Roy can be found in the show notes and on kansascity.com. Hey, we've got another deal for you. You can subscribe to Sports Pass for 99 cents a month. That's right, 99 pennies a month. Sports Pass is the Kansas City Star sports section, stories that appear in print, and much more that appears on kansascity.com. So after three months, this deal auto-renews at $5.99 a month unless you cancel. But what a time to subscribe. The Royals are off to a terrific start, right? The opening day victory over the Texas Rangers on the doorstep of the Final Four in Indianapolis. And of course, it is never not Chiefs season. So how do you get it? You go to KansasCity.com slash SportsPass2020. That's KansasCity.com slash SportsPass2020. Do you want more than just sports coverage? Check out the entire Kansas City Star product. Sports news features, commentary, and analysis, the whole thing, 
You get all the stories written by my talented colleagues, plus additional national news, sports, and business coverage with the E-Edition. There's over 100 pages every single day. It's fantastic. The details for all of these deals can be found at account.kansascity.com slash subscribe. And if you're having trouble hunting down any of these offers, send me an email, bkirkoff at kcstar.com. I'll get you to the right place. So whether it's the Sports Pass or the full subscription, you're getting and supporting the best sports and news coverage in Kansas City and helping us produce programs like Sports BKC. Thanks for listening, and we'll be back on Monday with another episode.